Hey everyone, this is Chris Gaines, co-founder of The Den, and we're here with State of the Industry, uh, the best podcast on blockchain and the crypto that you've ever heard. I'm here with uh, my two resident blockchain experts. We've got Svet Sadov and Jason Martin. Hello, everybody. Hi. And today we're diving into some more interesting topics that have come up over the past week that you are definitely going to want to know as you move forward with uh, whatever you're doing, cool stuff you're doing in the blockchain space. Uh, so without further ado, let's just hop straight into it. Yeah. Uh, so first article, uh, Svet, I know you're going to like this one. I like this one uh, or don't like, depending on how you uh, think about it. Uh, we're talking about North Korea, which is my favorite country of all because time. Because I'm Russian, <laughs> right? I like, I love, them. no, I don't. I don't. <laughs> Careful, you never know who's watching. <laughs> Or listening. Uh, all right. So uh, Kapersky Lab reported that Lazarus, uh, which is a hacker group, uh, they are allegedly are sponsored by North Korea. And they use uh, PowerShell, uh, our favorite uh, command line on Windows, <laughs> uh, to primarily target South Korean and Japanese users, uh, including those who are in crypto. Um, they basically, they develop custom PowerShell scripts that communicate with malicious C2 servers and execute commands from the operator. Uh, the server script names are disguised as uh, WordPress. Uh, everyone, most people are familiar with WordPress uh, uh, files, uh, as well as those from other popular open source projects. Um, and reportedly, they uh, are responsible for 571 million to 882 million dollars worth of uh, cryptocurrency that was stolen between 2017 and 2018, uh, primarily from uh, online exchanges. So, what do you guys think about? this <laughs> development <laughs> I'll, I'll start off so we have the russians pointing to the north koreans that's basically what we've got here <laughs> apparently uh, Svet? <laughs> explain <Europe>. yourself <laughs> uh, mm, yeah uh, but that's gonna be easy because uh i completely deny everything here so <laughs> russians not responsible for any hacks and uh, even if you are, you have to prove that, right? True, very true. <laughs> uh, but um, what I think, first of all, uh, is when I read that report, it says that uh, majority, if not all of those currency, were taken from only two geographical locations. Mm -hmm. And that's actually very interesting from my point of view, because North Korean regime, uh, they do not actually wage a war on whole of the on the whole of the uh, civilized world. They are targeting <laughs> to <specific>. their <laughs> uh, nemesis, historical <laughs> nemesis. So they are going against their Japan neighbors, <laughs> and of course against the South Korea. Yeah, and uh, nobody should be, of course, surprised about that. Neither was I, but. It actually tells me that uh, even in our uh, completely isolated small bubble of blockchain, we still have the same replica of the old political feuds, is we want it or not. And I think it's tragic. What do you think? Yeah, you know. <laughs> you, I don't, I don't know. you look I don't tragic. Can, I don't know if we can decentralize uh, war. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> decentralized fighting? Uh, I, 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 I don't know how it would change yeah. just with new tech. You know, it's just new tech, same same, old. same motivation, same people behind it. And we all know that North Korea has been known to, uh, well, they have nukes, you know, but they can't actually use them without any large repercussions. So they've shifted over to the the cyber, cyber attacks, you know, hacks, all that stuff. Uh, I'm sure we all remember the hack of uh, Sony uh around that that funny movie uh the interview um that's that's their way um that at least in my opinion they've been able to wage small amounts of war cause issues you know be uh active in you know getting their ideas out uh without any major repercussions right uh it's more like uh the more world became globalized, yeah. the more we have, uh, we are affected by very uh, lo local type of the propaganda. So uh, I don't know. Remember the times when uh, even the tsunamis didn't have such a repercussion as uh, there's uh, uh, 
uh, news we have nowadays because now we have that immediate accessibility for everybody to all of these dramas everywhere and the central medias or whatever they like we call it they do everything possible to spread it all across all channels right mm. and uh, uh, blockchain doesn't make it easier I think <laughs> so because now it's reflected on our uh, financial holdings right what do you think sure <laughs> well, I, mean, I was I was more interested in the fact that it was like sixty five percent they were saying of all the attacks are coming from this one hacker group. Uh, that's a yeah sixty five percent of the total <laughs> sum of that five hundred and seventy one to eighty eight hundred eighty two uh, is yeah attributed to <laughs> to, it's, it's to one group yeah. in North Korea that's targeting Japan and so, so they're, South Korea. They're good at they're good at it. <laughs> if it's true, I mean, if the article's true, supposedly they, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they figured something out, and they obviously have an agenda. Um, <laughs> if they're really targeting those just two specific places, <laughs> yeah, very specific places. And I assume that uh, uh, are we supposed to read that article like sixty-five percent crime is from North Korea. Where the rest thirty-five coming? Okay, from Kremlin, right? <laughs> that's, that's that's the gist of that article. Right? <laughs> We know for a fact about 65. Uh, 35 we don't talk about, but we also know from where it comes. And you also, you're making a good point about uh, with the globalization um, and now with, you know, blockchain and crypto allowing a more, a greater connection of finances to that globalization. Like beforehand, each country has its own fiat currency and you have to go through exchanges. There's still a, a lot of difficulty in like, very quickly moving money across borders, doing cyber attacks like that. Um, blockchain and crypto have enabled <laughs> North Korea to enact its, uh, its, uh, you know, its what their goals throughout the financial system. You see, Jason, Chris really understand the matter because uh, exactly because of the blockchain, we as individuals, now actors of the global political games, yeah. that's what was my point. Because prior to that, we were sitting in our small apartment, whatever, maybe big apartments, <laughs> watching <Silicon> televisions, <laughs> yes, not mine, <laughs> watching televisions and uh, okay, just news. Now, no. Uh, now our livelihood and I mean like a financial livelihood can depend on what political uh, powers do in the opposite side of the globe. And that's my point. Is you see, Jason, yeah, you yeah. just I mean, dismiss that point well, like but, but, like there's nothing. It's well, uh, it, it, it's one of those things that we've seen in crypto for forever, though. Like uh, uh, okay, okay, we've okay. seen China doing something. Oh, we're gonna ban it. You know, now and it's not banning this time. It's hacking. You know, like <laughs> it, it's some other negative press. You know, yeah, that yeah, it's yeah. coming out of the other side of the planet. Everybody wakes up in the morning. Oh my god, it's it's, <laughs> it's terrible. Everybody sell. You know, or everybody buy or whatever the news is. Um, so to your point, yeah, you're you're correct in that that uh, it it has been working that way for a while. Maybe it's that's why I'm just numb uh, to it. Yeah, I agree. One, uh, okay. Very treated like anything else. Right. Point. <laughs> I still think it's a big change. I still think that uh, very very uh, that the thing the thing of the future, because now we cannot just simply be. Uh, uh, you know, like a disregard what's happening in all the corners of the world and yeah. just don't pay attention, live on our happy small uh, island of America. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> not it, care. It makes me think not of not anymore. Uh, it makes me think of Moore's law and how you know the like processing speeds are doubling like every year basically. But in this case, it's the speed at which uh, impact or like decisions or actions across the the, uh, the world can have an impact on the other side. So it's getting faster Correct. and faster with exactly. the addition of more types yes. of connectivity, internet technology. With IoT, that could be a whole other thing. You know, we have an issue with sensors for whatever reason on one part of the world. It affects the supply chain on the entire other side. Exactly. So um, yeah. it's good to keep. A He's not impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. He's not. He was living all his life because. Hey, <laughs> it's just good to yeah, keep, keep an eye on it. The, the very he was using <laughs> Bitcoin much more than all of us wow, combined. I know that. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Jason's like, move on to the next topic. <laughs> move on. <laughs> well, what's the next topic? <laughs> He's getting me back because I started with, you know, talking about Russia. 
right. That was a retribution. <laughs> retribution. So stop, yeah, exactly. stop being nationalistic. <laughs> All right. So uh, next topic, uh, we're basically updating you guys on um, a previous topic that we talked about, which was uh, there's reports coming out that are giving they're showing obvious increases in blockchain spend across the world and, and this one is focusing specifically in the US um, so Sved I know you dove a little deeper into this one um, but basically uh, the new report uh, on blockchain spending uh, uh, on the research data platform so it states that in the US uh, it will increase from 3.12 billion uh, to 41 billion dollars by 2025. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit more about what you found in this article and how it compares to the previous stuff? Well, I don't really want to concentrate uh, longer than necessary because it's just like a small uh, like it's a more, repetition yeah, of our review, previous topic. Right. We already talked about that uh, quite a uh, progression in a blockchain uh, application all across the industries. And that report kind of confirm mm -hmm. and do not confirm uh the previous one because it confirms that the industry will be growing yeah but at the same time it says that it, the tempo of development will be uh much slower like a 45 percent per year not 70 percent per year at the same time this report is focused on united states only because previous one we discussed it was global, was, was global. Yeah. And that one uh, specifically emphasized that only in the United States of America, we will have 20 billion size industry in blockchain in 2025, which is now estimated about being 3 billion. So it's pretty much astonishing growth. Uh, I don't know, probably it's a unique growth. Uh, if you take all other industries in the world, you, mm. I don't know, you can challenge my assumptions but i haven't heard about anything else growing with so, such a uh, uh such a quick pace so how does this compare to your uh idea of the 10 year uh bear market <laughs> oh uh it can be absolutely not connected be between each other because my point was not that we don't have any um, progression in blockchain industry my Just point was about the market. The, the market bear market because uh well I think we will see in the next topics that we have political and, say, regulatory uh, like um, yeah. uh, obstacles. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to put it uh, more gently. Uh, still on our way in yeah. the future. That was my point. Okay. Do you have any input on that one? No, it was just interesting that, you know, the numbers change just in two weeks. You know, a different report comes out, different group of people, new numbers. You <laughs> yeah. know, uh, I like the way they're trending. Uh, hopefully hopefully <laughs> the future as, trends as, that way, too. As long as there's that, that one major agreement point, then it's like, OK, you know, they had different methods or, or different uh, numbers that they're looking at. Like, it's all projections at right. the end of the day. <laughs> like, there's only so much that you can gain from it outside of, like, basic, OK, here's the actions I want to take based on, oh, it's increasing. So, um, That's actually a very good point, uh, because we still have the same uh, non-confirmed reports. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have more optimistic projections, but still we cannot rely on that. Yeah, that's, exactly. Uh, like that's, no, nothing that's, changes. That's, that's a very important point you made. <laughs> that's how I view it. Um, yeah, I guess uh, we'll keep everyone updated on these as they as they come along. If maybe there's a, a new report that says something completely different, then uh, I hope it. our viewers excited now. <laughs> <laughs> they will be losing their minds. The new way is slightly better than two weeks ago. <laughs> please, please give us more of that. Maybe we'll make that a segment and just yeah. throw out like whatever the most recent <laughs> projections are. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, let's move on to the next one. Uh, okay. The Basel Committee on uh, Banking Supervision, which is basically the world's banking regulatory body, includes uh, notable countries, Argentina, uh, the U.S., Switzerland, uh, etc., Russia. Um, included, <laughs> included, Stop doing that. <laughs> included a, a warning statement on crypto assets. Um, so the committee is of the view that the continued growth of crypto asset trading platforms and the new financial products related to crypto assets has the potential to raise financial stability concerns and increase risks faced by banks. 
did we even define last week what a crypto asset was? Was that one oh, of the... Oh, we tried to. We, or we didn't try to. Yeah. We tried Took to help the regulators. Some regulators. <laughs> we did. Uh, we did. On crypto assets, right? We did. Because yeah. <laughs> I... It's kind of hard to understand what they're even talking about here without knowing what, what their the definition, definition for is. crypto asset is. One thing we actually uh, caught my attention when I was reading, they, there's guys still stationed the same terminology. Which, it, which uh, was uh, even not uh, in terminological fields, uh, field, uh, even two years ago already. Mm -hmm. So those guys still uh, think that crypto assets and cryptocurrencies is the same thing. Uh, because we know now that uh, uh, crypto assets actually like spread all across known field of assets. You know, it's real mm -hmm. estate, it's uh, 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 fungibles, it's... Uh, uh, like fractional ownership. Yes, fractional everything. Side. Okay, what we have, and uh, they're still thinking about that. It's a currencies which are not good for the financial stabilities of the world. So they're how, taking how, how they're we... taking like a almost a hardline approach uh, of stating like, based on these recommendations, they're saying there's no such thing as a a cryptocurrency that could replace a fiat currency. Basically, that that like. It says right here, uh, such assets do not reliably provide standard functions of money and are unsafe to rely on as a medium of exchange or store of value. Crypt crypto assets are not legal tender and are not backed by any government or public authority. It's actually, it shouldn't surprise us, right? No. So these guys stick their, to, their, to their guns and try to protect all of us from their uh, uh, criminals and uh, misbehavior. <laughs> Uh, mis misbehaving teenagers who rob us every day. So uh, I assume they're doing their job, but uh, I think they're doing their job very poorly. Mm. In a situation where not at least uh, four or five uh, major financial centers already accepting yeah. the existence of crypto, where we have ETF did several times discussed in the most important uh, like regulatory body well, allegedly in the world, the Security and Exchange Commission, right? Mm -hmm. How can they still keep that uh, medieval views on uh, finance? I, I That I cannot understand. So, And we've obviously seen nations, maybe not, you know, the most developed of nations, issuing <laughs> cryptocurrencies yeah. for replacement for their fiat. What was the first one that said? <laughs> Argentina? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. It <laughs> Apparently, it's not on their radar. <laughs> or maybe they didn't... Uh, they, they were, they their representative at that committee wasn't present that day. Um, uh, I think those guys, they're living in there. I don't know where they're living. It's uh, Luxembourg or Brussels, Brussels yeah. probably, yes. Uh, there is this big building which separated by couple of defenses and then they drive their <laughs> limos there and then they drive back and of course that's their lives they don't talk to anybody except their peers and of course they just live in this very luxury luxurious but small bubble and that's a result those guys don't listen those guys think that they are of course they're very reputable they have experience and of course we kind of respect them up to the point but uh what the value they're giving I don't think that value is. Uh, there's. I don't uh, think there valuable. is. I don't think there is any value being added here outside of like uh, slowing down progress and innovation. No, protect banks. Uh, yeah, and like prote protecting existing interests. Like it's working for us. Why shake up the <laughs> shake the tree? I don't really think that they are kind of anti-innovation because they're really I'm, kind I, of I don't think, smart guys. But I think it's it's like. As opposed to analyzing what is currently happening, say in Argentina, uh, they this specifically states like we believe it does not have any uh, potential to be used like standard functions of money. I think here's a point: uh, most part of the 20th centuries, 20th century, we have a very very unstable periods everywhere in the world. You know, two world wars, then we have crisis after crisis. Then we have revolutions after revolutions. So those guys were brought in that uh, their careers was made in 20th centuries. Yeah. And uh, they think about the current situation, like at last we reach some it's kind of stability. And then for them, this civilization is a, you know, status civilization. So we have, we all have to comply 
Mm-hmm. That's their way of thinking. So as soon as they air all humanity comply with the rules which they think is right, <coughs> they think it's everything is just perfect. They think that there is no other way to do mm-hmm. uh, business, specifically finance, because finance uh, traditionally is the most conservative branch of uh, business. Yep. And it used to be last four or five, four hundred years. But if, maybe they don't realize that time changing faster than they think. Because we are not already living even in a 20th century, right? Already like <laughs> far, <laughs> the first quarter of the first one, of the 21st one. So uh, I still wait somebody start to realize that on top, but not yet, not yet. So, and, I mean, this is, I'm not super familiar with the Basel Committee. What real... Um, what influence, what real influence do they have? I mean, if we look at, you know, based on this statement, we do have to look at, a, you know, JB, JP Morgan coin, right? And like, doesn't that kind of, in a way, conflict with what's what they're saying here? It's actually a good question because Basel Committee is mostly influential in Europe because in the United States of America, of course, there are much more influential bodies, governmental, like uh, Federal Reserves and uh, corporate, like JP Morgan, you mentioned, but for European system, including Eastern European system, banking system, because uh, for some time in my career, I was running a bank, a private bank. Uh, I invested in that bank. And even us in a, like in the Eastern European country was heavily affected by basic committee regulation, because that's not it's something like a Federal Reserve type of regulation when mm. they say the rate must be such and such and the rate immediately changes. That, there's guys, they define more or less standards, but because they don't have a, like a immediate power in your bank, it's not necessary, uh, you don't have necessarily to implement that next day, they say. But because all of the banks in all of the countries regulated by central banks, mm-hmm. so there is no country in the world, there is no central, oh, I'm oh, sorry, uh, there is no country in the world which is not subject to central bank regulation because there are a lot of countries where there is no central banks, mm-hmm. like a lot of Caribbean countries, like countries in Central Africa and so on and so forth. But if your countries in Central Africa, they have like a one big bank who supervise all those all countries, okay. yeah. cross-national. And the same happens in Europe. So if you're a bank, small bank, as a, uh, I, I was a small bank, in that case... Uh, I have to report to the central bank, like every quarter. And this central bank sending me the requirements and they say, okay, here's a Basel committee telling us, central bank, that mm-hmm. you guys, but however small you are, you have to implement that like in a month. And that's become a law for me. That's why Basel committee is so influential. Okay. It's not a direct power, but the power of authority. Power of centralization, that's how it plays. Mm. That's why I think this system, because I was working in this system most of my career. Yeah. So I know that that system, uh, I wouldn't say it's uh, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, intentionally bad. That system historically bad. Mm. That system was built in a different circumstances without taking into account our new, uh, the, all these technological possibilities. Did, did I answer your question? Yeah, uh, so. <laughs> they have a decent amount of influence. <laughs> they do. Uh, okay, so then, um, what, what does, how does this affect uh, progress in the blockchain and crypto space, or does it, or does stuff just keep moving the way it has until you know, there's such a a, a wave of progress or proof that something is we're going to be correctly. growing you know yeah. whatever percentage we talked about <laughs> yeah. i think it was 45 percent every year <laughs> something, something wild like that how does, yeah. how does this from impact 40 that? to 70 yeah um i'm not sure i'm not sure how it's going to impact i mean it'll obviously impact some banks mm-hmm. and smaller banks as the information gets you know uh, put on uh you know trickles down to them yeah. that they have to you know make some regulatory changes or whatever they have to do process changes um but uh, i don't no it difference. actually can affect Same government deal. regulations. <laughs> yes, that could do. Because yeah. that's guys influential on the top. Yep. And mm-hmm. top includes senators, representatives. They're going to be listening to them as well, not only central banks. Yep. That's part of the problem. Mm-hmm. 
Because uh, those people don't listen to us. I don't think that any <laughs> regulators <laughs> watching that channel. I don't think so. Shout out if you are. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, but they're listening to those guys. All right. Well, uh, we've got some work to do then, guys. Uh, <laughs> We need a we need an inside man. <laughs> Not my job. <laughs> anyway, I'm you, out. How do, you, how do you get appointed to the Basel Committee? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can tell you. You yeah. just uh, go to the universities, have a good P degree, then have good connections, and then you maybe spend twenty years of your career working for <laughs> World Bank, and then maybe you become like a deputy of World Bank director, then maybe director, and then you get there. Then you get there. It's only like a 30, 40 years. Okay. Just, you have plenty of time. Quite, quite, quite the plan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we'll get back to you guys. <laughs> uh, let's move on to the, uh, the next topic. Um, all right, uh, we're back on uh, other governing bodies or uh, regulatory bodies, this time back in the U.S. Uh, the Technology Advisory Committee of the United States, uh, CFTC, or Commodity Futures Trading Commission, uh, got together to review several state of, the, state of the legal art reports on DLT legislation. Uh, although no committee's official statements are available for public scrutiny, uh, there is a really long document, Digital and Digitized Assets, Federal and State Jurisdictional Issues, uh, that was prepared for the meeting by several parties, including the American Bar, um, stands out not only by its sheer size, by the, but by the notoriety of its narrative. Um, so it contains the report uh, contains details of litigations in which CFTC was involved with uh, regards to what they call the CFTC's exercise of jurisdiction over virtual currencies. So we're looking into how they're trying to uh, manage uh, blockchain and cryptocurrencies. After, um, and so basically this, is, this document is revealing this ongoing feud that has been happening between the CFTC and the SEC over who has control of you know regulating cryptocurrencies as this whole industry is growing, so uh, what's going on with this whole situation? It sounds like there's a lot of issues, and this is just another layer of confusion for the end users <laughs> as well as regulators. Yeah. So I mean, the gist of it is that uh, if you know, like Bitcoin's a commodity, and we've heard that Bitcoin's a commodity, so the commodities. The commission. It's in, the, it's in the name, right? Regulates that, right? <laughs> securities. If these tokens are securities, then... <laughs> it's in the name, right? <laughs> it goes to <laughs> Securities Exchange Commission. But wait, which one is it? <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, it becomes that. You know, what is it? Is it? Is it this? Is it, And I'm sure they're going to go case by case on whatever they're investigating and looking into. Um, but, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't help us uh, on um, the end users on how we can... Decide which is which. Climb through the, right. the, the and part of it, part of it. I mean, this has been brought up before. Part of it is that we haven't seen like a court case go all the way through court, where the court has made a final decision as to what this particular scenario of cryptocurrency is. And without those rulings, it's just going to stay gray. Yeah. Um, and these people are going to continue to try to figure out who has jurisdiction when, when something actually does go to court, mm. or if they need to, you know, if somebody's broken the law and they need to bring somebody to court. <laughs> Who's taking charge? You know, you go to both. <laughs> they, they might just be both. Yeah, they might both be showing up if and you. One wants to put you in jail, and the yeah. other yeah. wants. And then like, the Justice Department will be there to you know like, make sure you go to prison afterwards, regardless. <laughs> 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 to, to, to delay to uh, in the case of like Eagle, to you know they'll be there to delay the uh, court case for like six years, so they can change a policy somewhere, or reinterpret it. Uh, so they can take all your assets and then shut your company down. So that's <laughs> so that's actually a, a question that pops up right away. Is if you are actively in uh, in court for a certain case that's been brought to you by the CFTC um, on something that there has not been a precedent set for, um, if that court case is going on and regulation actually gets signed while that case is going on, does that just retroactively just apply to? Yeah. The, the whole thing. Yeah. Usually no grandfathering on any of that. It's just how it goes. Really? That's scary. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they might not be as harsh on The judge your might sentencing. let you off a little bit. Yeah, but you'll, you'll still but get you're, you're, you're subject to, like, oh, well, we finally figured it out. <laughs> Sorry. 
So you didn't know about this beforehand. Right. Yeah, that's uh, actually uh, a very good point you made because uh, um, right at the start of this report, which I read, actually, uh, there is that clause which says until Congress specifically define what is cryptocurrency and what it is not, all of the four major agencies, you know, FinCEN, uh, Security and Exchange Commission, uh, FIF, uh, CFTC, CFTC, and IRS, and yeah. IRS, they all have a free hand on cryptocurrencies. That's a state of the affair right now. So they're all free to interpret the current situation as they wish mm -hmm. and to uh, proceed accordingly. So all of us have a risk to have all of four of them coming after us, independent whether it's contradictory or overlap of the authority or anything else. That, uh, that's the conclusion of that report. <laughs> a lot of this yeah it's scary so a lot of this has me it's not a great situation the regulators I can fully admit they've been put in a really difficult situation right. because they've never been able to maybe back in you know the 1700s they've been able to keep up with the the speed of technology technological developments like <laughs> to a certain point but in the internet age information travels so quickly I get it. They're not prepared or not set up to handle this. What would have been the best way for this, for in the 10 years or however long that Bitcoin and blockchain has been growing and be, like gaining uh, traction and becoming more uh, visible in the world, what would have been the, the best way, the right way to have regulations work well with what's being Built, I, like I, I don't think there. Uh, is. The, the answer is that it was built decentralized, so it couldn't be stopped to begin with. But, but, but that that still kind of sort of it's exists, the side and step. it's still it's the side step. Yeah, all of this nonsense. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> maybe that's it. Well, maybe they just should uh, stop trying. <laughs> uh, they're not going to, of but, course, because uh, if money's being made, they want their cut. Exactly. So, well, I, that's that's an excellent point because. Uh, uh, last week when Andreas Antonopoulos came here and we met him, mm -hmm. I met him, we talked to him, and actually that was his, uh, his, uh, his uh, I don't want to say point of view, that's mm -hmm. his actual ideology, because what he's saying is that, what do you expect? Mm -hmm. That's good. Because yeah. that was the design, as you said. Mm -hmm. That was exactly the idea, to get rid mm -hmm. of the unnecessary regulation. Because the point of decentralization is not anarchy. Yeah. It's not get rid of the police, of the things which help us, but to get rid of things which are already unnecessary because we ourselves can control our actions. We are grown human beings, at least when after 18 year old in most <laughs> of the countries. And we can do that by ourselves just like that, right? So we are and we're going to work, right? We're raising families, so we can do that thing. We kind of going outside and ride out cars on motorcycles, which is much more dangerous than, I'm sorry, making a transaction for thousand dollars and buying some kind of crypto assets. But why we still have like a four uh, old, uh, like uh, oversized uh, organizations looking for each and every step and punishing us for one dollar? Mis uh, reporting or something it just doesn't make sense uh, from all point of view politically, economically, socially. It, it gets. I've heard the report where they said that right now only the cost of compliance mm -hmm. with all of these AML rules, which didn't. Have you ever remember one report just thanks to ML, we caught the terrorist <laughs> or we just prevented some big, big plot? Have you ever heard about that? Not in your life. But yearly, corporations, companies spent more than $8 billion only on this compliance. Only on, imagine the cost for small business. I can't imagine, of course, that J.P. Morgan is just saying, okay, it's just peanuts, right? But for small company, it may be 10, it may be 5, 6%, specifically with people who are dealing with, uh, you know, um, sending money back and forth because they're international, uh, not necessarily traders, but a uh, company which uh, sell their domestically produced apples or whatever, yeah? Mm -hmm. All across, even not continents, several countries. 
all of them have to follow these rules, which are unproductive. Just it's not because we guess that, but because there is much better uh, technological possibilities to implement it. Much better. And it almost it feels like uh, there's like a overall societal uh, resistance to shifting responsibility from governments from oh someone else if i lose my money on a on an exchange i have someone i can blame that's not me from shifting responsibility from that entity to the individual which is what i don't think it's a shift it. you have to take it that's what it's, it comes down to. Well, you I mean, take the responsibility. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it is, uh, if someone wants to engage in that system, but the people who are in, already engaged in the, you know, oh, shifting blame off, they don't want to do that. They don't want to say, right. oh, you know what? It's okay for an individual to, you know, handle this. And if they make a mistake or whatever it might be, they are responsible for, for that loss of, you know, asset or whatever it might be. Yeah, and then there is a kind of uh, logical limits to any types of control. If you think, if you think like there is a transaction for one hundred million dollars coming from I don't know uh, Afghanistan to I don't know, North Korea. Okay, here we got a case, right? We can look at that. But if there is like a twenty-five dollars coming from one pocket to another, or hundred dollars, or even thousand dollars, why does people have to report everything, mm -hmm. right? It just doesn't make any sense. Uh, even these uh, limits of five thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, it's just already absolutely outdated. Uh, I don't know. Average salaries in developed countries is probably fifty, sixty thousand dollars. So transaction for ten thousand dollars is nothing unusual. But still, all of those rules they are watching for that limit. Make it hundred thousand dollars. Okay. It's it's still yeah. regulation. But, but they're not. It's like we bad. talked a few weeks ago that they're going to go for a thousand dollars. It's not it's not going increase. to a hundred. It's going to a thousand. Then it'll be a yeah. hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, <laughs> it'll be anything. Yeah, it'll be whatever transaction you have. Yeah. Yeah. You just build a bigger computer and it'll track all that. <laughs> yeah. And just give us your private keys while you're at it. Yeah. <laughs> Here's your new social security type number that you do all your business with and we're tracking all that. So Gov, again, Gov uh, chain. <laughs> so I think the most people in blockchain, I know at least, uh, they are very technical. So nobody talk about ideology. Mm -hmm. I'm not an ideologue. I lived in through socialism, through like a capitalism. Now through I don't know how to call it the developed phase of the capitalism, <laughs> and I absolutely indifferent to all of this stuff. Let us let them. Let us do business, right? Mm. Live lives, travel, achieve some results, build beautiful companies. That's what we all want, right? When government starts to think about us like small parts of their big schemes, who likes that? I don't think any any like person on that side of it likes it. Of course it. not. Either on this side or that side. And then, again, we have... All of these blockchain enthusiasts, specialists, they're saying, look, we invented that. We can do that much. It's the same thing we should care about. Same type of... Okay, blockchain is open. <laughs> it's <laughs> all records online. Mm -hmm. what, you, what, what else you want? <laughs> Go and it's look. Everything. Do your uh, security job there. Don't let us write your... Don't let us make this paperwork because you know we live in america we all fill in all of these stupid 60 pages reports every dollar should be accounted for and only the cost of these papers i mean like it's, it's much more than we are reporting everybody knows that but no, nobody want to do anything about that why because it's already become established a mm. lot of people doing money of that and how can we shift from that to this is we say no all our lives lives of next generation we spend doing same thing always but that's not how history works yeah. right so that's just experience maybe we like to stay in the same situation for generation because it's going to be uh, quiet <laughs> not easy but quiet no innovation just forget about that right <laughs> see what happens. Why? yeah <laughs> those guys on top will be happy 
but that's not how civilization works. Civilization developed based on the technologies, right? Mm -hmm. Technologies affect social structure, social structure affect economy and everything. And now we are on a threshold. That's at least what yeah, I believe. Uh, yeah, I totally agree. I mean, you're even seeing, you know, this political uh, season that's upcoming, you know, more candidates that are running for the presidency are talking more and more about technological yeah. issues. So it, it's finally like people my Coming age and slightly stage, over yeah. are finally getting to the point they're getting into politics and, and, and starting to starting to help out a little bit. I mean, I hope, I hope they help out. <laughs> oh, that's a perfect <laughs> point. It seems that way. Yeah. Actually, if you check out, I did that actually, you know, I'm reading stuff. So if you check the uh, education of all of the United States senators, so what do you find? What do you think? What are most of them have an educational background in? Uh, Ivy League. Uh, yeah. No, no, no. Yes, of course. Uh, but, I mean, like, what, what's their, I don't their know. Their majors? Uh, like yes. Law, political Politics science or, or law. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. More than 50, 40, 50 percent, it is a law of political science or something of that kind. Yeah. The rest is just some, so, okay, we can find the farmers there. Some of them, like maybe, I don't know, I didn't come back by any few of them. A lot of industrialists, people with maybe like, but not so many as we can expect, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of career bureaucrats there. Yeah. Although what people we see on television, usually that people not from that stock. Because just that's the celebrities, right? People who made their uh, career, I don't know, uh, how many Babazowi senators you know with a real, okay, I'm sorry. They, they, they all have achievements, but, but the achievements which count in our world, right? right? Because in our world, what counts is, did you build a corporate, or did you build a company, right? So was that company successful, mm. right? So what you really can produce code, text, that's what counts in our world. We call it meritocracy. Yeah. But in their world, what counts is so-called career, right? You made step by step, sometimes very painfully, that uh, progress to the top when you become a boss, millions of dollars, and that's the call career. Hmm. I don't think that's a relevant things of the yeah. future yeah because agree. it's a of course they are absolutely beautiful individuals and but they spend their lives fighting against each other making all these political maneuvers and in order to get on top of each kind of pyramid it's how the society is structured right now and by the way i lived through that i you know i spent 10 years in art or understand under consulting accenture so i'm not talking from books it's experience mm -hmm. and everybody has to decide which way of life he or she can follow but the thing is technology is changing and that's changed social structure that's the thing that's what i believe that's what i've seen mm -hmm. That's why I'm so passionate about, well, not only blockchain, I but mean, the gosh. technology in general. We see it every day here in the Bay Area, you know. Exactly, it's, yes. Yeah. It's Silicon Valley, you know, that technology creates, you know. Interesting but, changes. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> tremendous and amazing changes. Not so quick, not so fast as we. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, essentially there is, there's always going to be resistance to change, but change is inevitable. That's a that's a great way to wrap it up. Put a bow on it. Yes. <laughs> Do we have more topics? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, let's move. Uh, the topic that I personally uh, have been really interested in just learning more about as it's popped up in the news recently. Um, Article thirteen uh, slash seventeen in um, in primarily in the EU uh, has been it's been getting a lot of uh, attention. Recently, uh, people or legislators are looking to pass it. Um, and basically, Article 13 is making it so that whenever someone uploads something to the Internet, you know, for the most part, uh, wherever it is being stored, whatever the platform that is accepting that, that content, they are going to be required to go into a compliance that shows that they are checking that content for copyright for previously copyrighted works of any sort. And they have to have the ability to remove it, to flag it, uh, and essentially, uh, I mean, on Reddit, what we see <laughs> is people are angry that memes <laughs> will no longer be uh, legal in, in the EU. <laughs> really? Um, but I wanted to, to dive into the impact that that could have on, uh, as far as blockchain 
And when you have something like a decentralized public ledger where anyone can upload anything, there's no one who's sing singly, uh, essentially responsible for it. Um, it's part of the internet. You access it through the internet. How is that going to even work with this law or this, uh, this Article 13, which also I think is completely misguided in the first place? <laughs> There's just so many like things that are just that don't make sense with this. We <laughs> <laughs> my we side. Have, so, <laughs> so this whole to me, this whole Article Thirteen is a very close friend to censorship. Yes, it is. It, 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 it's a censorship is. issue. Is yeah. what it comes down to. They're positioning it and packaging it as copyright protection, but it's a censorship issue. Yeah. And what is the blockchain great at doing? Preventing censorship. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I don't think they're going to play together very well um, with the technology. Um, and again, I don't think that it needs to because I think the blockchain's the better choice. Oh, completely agreed. <laughs> uh, it's uh, after all of this um, previous topics, it's uh, uh, very hard to see that development on from the positive side, mm -hmm. but I will try. <laughs> okay. Please. <laughs> but, but hang on, there is a positive. I have got a positive. We've made this podcast. It goes up on somebody's platform. <laughs> Somehow we're benefiting. So. <laughs> okay. But I want someone to repost this, repost this Me podcast. Me too. Yeah, exactly. Your... <laughs> Please. I'm begging you. <laughs> Share it. I give you, I give you consent to repost this in Europe. Post it on <laughs> specifically, you know, uh, a bunch of government websites that allow for sharing. Uh, go yeah. for it. Yeah. <laughs> Make them check the copyright. Granted. <laughs> and, and the reason why I'm, I, I want to be positive, because I'm not of the school of the sorts, they, which uh, kind of saying, okay, all of these people just bad. All of these people just want to ruin our lives in our beautiful um, cryptocurrency uh, city in the heavens. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so city. because I know some of those people and those people actually good. Those people actually very intelligent, but they have different point of view. And that point of view was reinforced by their lives. So it's very difficult to change this point. Of view. And what I think positive from what they're doing, they still keep in some track of principles. Because here's the principle. Do we have copyright principle? Do we have proprietorship rights of the person on the product of his intelligence, of his uh, life work? And if we do, how we follow up with that in the technology era? Because it's not a simple question, right? No. Because Putin, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> because taking your... <laughs> Did you say Putin? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Forget about it. We've got it in. <laughs> Good. Mr. Putin, did I tell it what you wanted? <laughs> That's what you expect, right? Uh, because say I produce some meme, 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 and put in a watermark on that. Does it work? No. I don't think so, right? I've seen like a thousand <laughs> pictures on the internet. I got in my articles, you know, I publish articles. I put somebody, right. I love this beautiful artworks and I look for artists all across the world. And I think I'm making good because I put, there's uh, their beautiful paintings and say that they're paintings following all the copyrights, but I'm making promote, I'm promoting their paintings. Anyway, how we do that with blockchain? Do we have a, so, Shall we completely forget about this old principle of uh, uh, kind of gratifying people's efforts by copywriting them? What do you think? Uh, I think the copyright rules how they are are fine. Uh, applying them to blockchain, though, is hard. going to be hard. Uh, extremely difficult. Um, Darn near impossible once BitTorrent comes out. Well, uh, why <laughs> don't? <laughs> okay, here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. What may be the uh, possibility? Because now we all rely on the power of the state for enforce law, right? Mm. We do something wrong on the street or uh, whatever, driving, and then we have peace officer coming to us and. Uh, 
giving us this beautiful $250 uh, <laughs> worst piece of donation paper. donation to the state. Yes, that's how we work. Uh, how it works now? What if the next the the power which we never employed is a power of public opinion? What if, for example, you produce some well, article, mm. book, and put it on the blockchain and make sure that you have a timestamp on it? Right? It, it, will, it will have timestamp anyway, right? Because it's included in the block. I don't know any blockchain without timestamp uh, time in the block. So we, you already established yourself as an author. Mm. So then if there is a, somebody taking that article and published somewhere else, he, there must be some possibility for you making that type of misdemeanor public affect which have to affect social graph of that person you see what i'm saying because uh we already have some kind of feedback on our own uh, social graphs right we have uh, i don't know we all have accounts in uh, social networks maybe you don't <laughs> uh you do right oh, I facebook a, i got a couple linkedin sounds Sorry, about link, linkedin yes you can find me there. So, what, 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 what if in the future all of these blockchain new type of social networks will allow other people to post on your uh, page yeah, yeah. all of these negative remarks of your violations of everything, and then that gonna be counted uh, by uh, I don't know, maybe even a score. I know that you know this social score sounds so terrible. This is but, this is but, quickly but, turning but down to Black it. Mirror. Yeah, yeah. But, but at the same time, you know, they have the right to be forgotten now too. So you can't keep GDPR that locked in. requires the uh, right to be so forgotten. So they have to. It's a very good point. Yeah, that I don't is, have an answer to that. Yeah. I don't have it's an answer. To that. So even if the person is a jerk and stealing all your stuff, as long as they just don't do it but, for a certain but guys, but time, they're forgotten anyways. Guys, I have a hard job. I defend that. So uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I have... Uh, there are <laughs> truly some things they're trying to do. I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea on trying to enforce copyright, you know, and coming up with a way to enforce copyright. But it's always been that the platform that's listing it, it's been hands-off, you know, because people post whatever they want. And I don't know, that's some, of it, some of it's like, hey, they need to have these filters mm -hmm. uh, of some of the things I was reading about. Uh, uh, it says, hey, let's build these filters out so that it can automatically like filter these things or, or, or discover how this, uh, you know, where it's come from yeah. uh, and sources. Those things don't exist, you know? So how are you going to implement technology that doesn't exist? They're just like, we're going to make the technology? Who's going to make this technology? <laughs> Who's going to pay for this technology? Uh, yeah, <laughs> to, to create it and then use it. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, on that point, I had so many points. I want to make sure I, I hit, touch them briefly. Please. Um, on that point, see, you have uh, like Facebook and YouTube. YouTube is probably a great example of something that could be impacted by this. They already have their content ID uh, system, which for certain types of content, for large corporations who have the money to you know make sure these all get on there, if you re-upload a, a Marvel movie to YouTube, that gets flagged immediately. That makes sense. That is kind of sort of what but we've what also seen wants. on YouTube. People just hum songs, and it gets a copyright strike. Yeah, so, for so humming that's it. the other side. That's the <laughs> other side, right? Is you have a direct, a blatant copy where it's like, okay, that please flag that. That's fine. But if we have this system in place where the platform is required to remove the content uh, proactively, as opposed to um, you know allowing people to figure it out on their own then you're going to have uh, people who are getting flagged, getting copyright strikes for creating... This is where I was getting to, is fair use, right? Mm -hmm. The fair use laws are interesting, to say the least, um, and they're kind of ambiguous. Like, it, it, they're always kind of open to interpretation based on, is this a transformative work based on what the original content that is being used? How are we going to create <laughs> software or filters? Educational materials yeah you know, like it, it can act accurately say oh this is a fair usage of this oh this isn't um and you know if people more and more people's livelihoods are built off of you know content and the internet and they can be susceptible to immediately oh this transformative work that i'm doing on some news uh, article or something that comes out uh i have a clip in there that was just a little too long for the filter even though i'm adding value to it and it stands on its own that person loses out on their ad revenue for that month or whatever, and you're creating crazy problems, right? Mm -hmm. 
And on the flip side, or not flip side, on the same side, <laughs> uh, we were talking about this earlier. Uh, smaller, uh, so the, the article that I was reading, uh, smaller forums, for instance. It's a simple forum that allows you to upload links or pictures in your posts would have to implement... Just all of them. Yeah, exactly. Would have to implement the same type of thing. A forum that's run by one person or a few moderators that just happens to have, you know, a million visitors. It's been existing for a long time. It has a million visitors uh, per month. Um, they would probably be required to, in order to comply, to implement this entire thing that, you know, retroactively goes back through all the, the content and filters everything coming forward. They're not gonna, they might not have money to do that. They might not want to. So that would just shut off a large portion of the internet of people who are just doing things that are that are that have been viewed as fine for the longest time or fair use, are just posting links to, or to just, content. Or it sends them underground for other options. Yes, yeah, which guys, <laughs> you don't make my job easier to defend that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm struggling. I'm, I'm, we're trying to help. Trying no, to you don't. No, 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 you don't. <laughs> you really, you really make, make it more difficult for me. Just watch out. <laughs> Uh, one thing which I can say, right? So uh, mm, I don't know even how to put it because uh, there is a bad loss, but the uh, efficient democratic system must be able to revoke this loss if they prove to be inefficient. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that unfortunate part of being part of uh, living in uh, such a type of legal system is we have to bear that there's consequences unless we have majority of people being affected and voting against it mm -hmm. so only one thing i can tell you guys so be patient Lose some money, <laughs> go bankrupt, but that's for the betterment of the society. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's how it works. All right, he's, he's I got, hope it helps. It helps, yes. But that's going to improve our system. So somebody must die, you know, somebody must go to prison. That's how the system works. Somebody must go to prison in order to make things better. Oh god! I don't know. I think you're gonna hate me. Just, I'm sorry. I, I just, I, I just need to defend that because otherwise, you know, who, there, who will? Who will? There is the one other other thing where um, I believe that the uh, all of the the countries in the EU have like two years to draft their own specific versions of this legislation, meaning every single country in the EU has to go through and process the same situation. So. Um, it's entirely possible, and I'm hoping that that brings this issue to a much larger stage, and then people realize the, the issues that it's going to cause, and they figure out a way to shut it down. <laughs> uh, yes. Or everyone in Europe is just going to be on a VPN. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it, it will cost only like a thousand people spending like a hundred years in jail, but it's okay. <laughs> Just, just very small, you know. This uh, just one generation, just just a few martyrs, you know. <laughs> that tree of liberty must be sometimes nourished by the blood of blockchainers. Have you heard about oh, yeah, that? Yeah, so yeah, sure. <laughs> Meme martyrs. That's, that's <laughs> <we> yes. <laughs> so, yep. Next one. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I think I think that's enough <laughs> for today. We, yep. We've definitely run into some uh, some interesting developments. Uh, as always, we're, we're here to just get the information out there so you can make, uh, make informed decisions and find the things that matter to you, uh, and take action on them. That's, that's all we can ask for. Um, and I think that's what we want to provide. <laughs> exactly. Take the right type of action, not to spend the rest of, the, of your life in beautiful, very, <laughs> bliss, <laughs> very comfortable bliss. prisons. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's where you don't want to. Uh, make your career. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm representing the, uh, no, the opposition to the mainstream. It's always good to have all perspectives yes. uh, represented. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for uh, for listening and you know, staying along with us. Uh, it's been awesome. Uh, definitely check out The Den at www.theden.io. Uh, what's coming up this week? We've got uh, our blockchain lecture series this Wednesday on um, blockchain and venture capital. 
So uh, seeing what connections are going on in, in that area. We have uh, Woodside Capital, I believe, is, uh, is the speaker. So that's going to be really cool. Uh, we're in China, uh, not me personally, but uh, the rest of the team is going to be in China for a big uh, blockchain conference over there. I will be speaking, we'll be running our Hyperledger class and our uh, blockchain for developers class uh, on Ethereum primarily. Um, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, you can you know, connect with us, follow us on social media at Denexus, D-E-N-N-E-X-U-S, uh, and join our Telegram group at t.me slash Denexus uh, so we can talk about, you know, we can share memes uh, and, you know, <laughs> whatever we want to do. Um, it's that. Okay, I know that nobody listened to the end of the video. I never do that, but in case you're still there, my name is Svet. You can check me in uh, YouTube. You can check me in uh, pretty much everywhere. You can Google my name, Svet Sedov, and also join my Telegram channel where we mostly discuss technologies. Uh, I mean, of course, blockchain technologies, cryptocurrencies. You can leave their, your opinion and you can ask experts uh, to help you with the issues you have. So... Thank you for listening to us today. And I'm Jason Martin, and uh, I try to stay off all social media for the most part. But I will be at Blockchain for All coming up in Oakland. That's right. And Chris, That's... you're presenting there, so yeah. uh, you're uh, on the panel or something. <laughs> I, I, I'm on the panel at uh, Blockchain for All. I believe it's uh, April 12th up in Oakland. Uh, you can go to blockchainforall.io, and uh, you can check that out. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a big conference. There's a lot of people speaking, so uh, hopefully we'll see you there. Um, we might also be running a, we were talking about running a small uh, or live podcast there. So um, keep an eye out for that. We'll, we'll throw out some updates. Oh, that's a great media. idea. So um, yeah, without further ado, uh, we'll catch Bye. you guys next time. See you next time. Bye.